Hey there, welcome to a new video with PSD Box. Today we're gonna see how to make HDR images using Aurora HDR. I know that many of you know that now even Lightroom and Photoshop can create HDR images and there are other software like Photomatix. Uh, but today I'm gonna show you how to work with Aurora HDR, which is a software that allows you to make HDR images and has some really unique features. And um, you can also work with single images as well. So uh, this is the basic interface. It's not going to be a tutorial, but uh, I'm gonna show you how to work with it and a quick overview. I'll, if, you, if I get requests, I'll make um, more in-depth tutorials about how to use it and about the features of the software. I'm gonna give you uh, raw images that you can use to test it out. And uh, I'm gonna go to my folder. I have uh, three images here, but I'm gonna use these ones for this video. And keep in mind that working with HDR images, it's a lot better um, to have raw files. So uh, I'm just gonna cancel just to show that you can also batch process images. So you can batch process HDR images and also single images because you can, as I said, you can use this software as a photo editor as well. So uh, once you import your images here, you will have um, a representation of all the images. You can see I have a uh, two stop under exposure, the normal exposure and the overexposure, two stops higher. And I'm gonna choose ghost reduction. And when you choose that, uh, it will ask you which one you wanna use as reference. In this case, I'm gonna choose the zero EV, which is the normal exposure. I wanna color denoise and also I wanna remove chromatic aberration because I shot this image with a wide angle uh, lens. So I'm gonna also check align and choose create HDR. And now the software will start to align the image and I'm gonna see the image on the screen in just a second. So here's my processed image. As you can see, it does not apply any kind of preset. Before we start, let me just uh, talk a bit about the features that uh, this software has, and then we can go on and see all the modules here. So one of the features that I like the most uh, when I first tried it is the ability to have layers. So you can create multiple layers with different settings here. So each layer can have its own settings and you can uh, tweak separately color, contrast uh, if you want. And here on the bottom, you'll see a list of presets. One other thing that you have is you have lots of features that Photoshop has, like for example, the HSL. Uh, let me see if I can find it right here, HSL. So you can change the hue, saturation and luminance of the colors independently. You also have the split toning. You, all, you, ha you even have dodge and burn and you can also have the post crop vignette which you have in Photoshop as, ha as well. You can create all sorts of gradients and we'll see that uh, in just a second. And see here on the bottom you can um, see the presets that uh, the program comes with. I guess you can create your own as well. And uh, here you can see a few uh, categories which you can choose from and uh, I didn't try any of, of them, but yeah, as you can see, they load here. And I guess you can create your own user presets right here. I don't have any uh, saved. And one of the features that I like, again, is that you can overlay one of the presets to the image here. So I can choose overlay preset. Uh, first, let's um, choose one of the presets here. So yeah, first overlay preset. And I choose this one. And as you can see, I have uh, two layers here, but uh, we'll see how to work with layers in just a second. So let's delete that. Okay, so this is my basic image. Now you can see we have several modules here. I'm gonna minimize all of them so you can see them better. And you can, you can end up with a really uh, cool HDR effect. So it's basically like having Lightroom with uh, extra um, high power HDR features here. So we have HDR basic, color, HDR structure, denoise, image radiance, and all of the things that you can see here. And um, on the basic and color, it's basically like having the, like having the basic um, modules in Lightroom. So basically you can change the temperature of your image. I don't wanna change uh, anything here. Well, actually probably the shadows a bit. 
you will see that we can change uh, independently the bottom and the top of the image, but uh, we'll see that in a bit later on. So um, you can edit the image the way you would do. You can change the saturation, the vibrance, and also the uh, one of the things that I like here from the color is the color contrast. So basically, you can increase the contrast, but only on the colored part. So I don't know how that exactly works, but it's it's almost like increasing the vibrance, but not exactly. And here is where the HDR comes into play, the HDR structure. You can see it's by default it's set to 50 and some of the sliders set to zero. But here is where you can uh, create your own presets. Uh, obviously, I don't like this kind of stuff. Uh, you can see this a lot in many images on the internet. I really hate that kind of effect. I'm more uh, after a natural look. Um, actually, Combining the images themselves already gives you the, the dynamic range that uh, you can see here, which is awesome. So pretty much you don't have to do anything, but um, I'm just gonna show you what you can do. So I would probably increase the structure just a bit, but uh, here we can reduce the noise. Uh, for that, I would recommend you zoom in at 100%. Double clicking on the image will zoom at 100% where you click. So for example, if I wanna zoom in right into here, I'm gonna double click and you will see how it zooms in and you can increase the noise and we have some uh, fine-tuned features here to uh, adjust the denoise effect. And then on the image radiance, what it does is kind of creates a so sort of a softer look and you can change, I, I don't know what exactly this is, it's sort of kind of a filter but uh, it, can, it can come in handy sometimes so uh, you can play with that. I usually don't use this that much because I don't want to create this sort of effect, this sort of effect for my images. Uh, polarizing filter works really cool. Um, you can see effects basically the sky, which is uh, what uh, a polarizing filter does most of the times. HDR detail boosts here is to um, sharpen image on different levels, small details, medium details, and large details. Uh, let me show you that. Uh, see that here on the sky, I increase the small detail to the maximum. It's not something that I like, I would probably leave it there. And medium detail as well, just, just look at the image while I change this and I'm gonna put the large to the maximum and you can see what it does. Uh, small detail is good to increase um, local contrast, uh, really uh, cool feature. Protection, uh, it's gonna protect some areas. I'm not sure exactly how it works because I did not investigate that in depth. And masking, I guess, is to protect some uh, some of the area on, of the image as well. Glow uh, will create this sort of soft glow, um, similar to some of uh, one of the filters that we have in the filter gallery in Photoshop. And here you can control the glow and also the color of that, uh, of that glow if you wanna and put it warmer or or colder. So let's leave that to zero. I don't want to use that. Top and bottom tuning. This has a built-in gradient filter. If you choose set orientation, you can see this overlay uh, appears here. So I can change the transition and set my horizon. Of course, I can also rotate it. Uh, if I click here and just rotate that however you want. And here you can change the exposure on the top. You can see top and bottom. So if I want to change the top, I can increase the exposure and the contrast if I want to. And I can desaturate it or saturate it more and change the warmth of it. So it's really it's really cool. On the bottom, for example, I could increase the exposure because I see it's a bit too dark. And lower the contrast and saturation, I'm gonna leave it there. Let's move on. Uh, you can also disable each, um, each module. And if you want to reset it on, on the right side, you'll see this arrow, which allows you to reset to the default. Tone curve, exactly like in Lightroom and Photoshop, is just a curve that allows you to further uh, edit your images. You can also uh, work with this to move the whole curve. And let's reset that. Uh, you, of course, you can go into the channel, so you can uh, have this advanced feature to change your colors from the channels. Um, Nothing really fancy there, just a curve, but it's nice to have it there to make fine tunings if you want to. HSL, like in Lightroom, as I said, um, I really like this feature because uh, sometimes you wanna change the tone of the color. So for example, if I wanna change this 
yellows uh, to something uh, this oranges to something more yellowish or something more greenish I can choose orange choose hue and just move that and change the color you can see only on the oranges the greens if I want to desaturate them or change the tone of them I can move this and you can I can get this sort of a autumn looking effect or I can just desaturate blues for example or aquas and you can see I have this sort of weird effect or I want to saturate more the yellows, I can do that, and reds. So that's really cool. I, I can also change the luminance if I want to. So if I want the sky to be brighter, I can go to the blues. I can simply just move the slider to the right and get more luminosity on, more luminance on that area. So it's really cool to have this HSL module here. I wouldn't expect to have uh, something like this on an HDR software. Color toning, this is like the split toning in Lightroom. So uh, basically you can set the highlights to have a tone and then just saturate that and then go to the shadows and maybe put this tone here and increase the saturation and you can create this sort of split toning effect uh, there I don't really well I, I do like this but on some cases only so I'm gonna undo that dodging and burning it's also really cool so um, this allows you to paint on the image just like you would do in Photoshop so if I want this rock for example to be brighter I can choose start painting and here on the top when you choose that uh, option you can set the setting so I want to lighten or darken the areas that I want to paint or I want to erase the effect that I painted here you have the size of the brush so you can see you can make it higher or smaller I don't know the keyboard shortcuts I don't know if they have keyboard shortcuts I guess they have but I don't know them yet here you can set this the size of the brush and the strength is the power of the brush just to say it that way okay so my advice is that you use smaller um, amounts here on the strength and just as I, as I work in Photoshop slowly build the effect wherever you want it so you can use even a really big brush uh, 400 is the maximum but you can see this is a 6000 by 4000 image and you can see it's a really big brush so I think it's enough if you don't like what you've done reset and everything goes back to the normal the same with the dark so you can darken images like this it's not like the brush in Lightroom because uh, you cannot change what the brush does but uh, it works really uh, really well um, the purpose of dodging and burning is that the amount here you can change uh, the opacity of the effect so once you paint it in you can change the amount and change the opacity of it what else let's move on and last we have the vignette just like in Photoshop post crop vignetting uh, just to add vignette as I can see oh yeah it's pretty strong size refers to the how small this uh, hole is uh, to say that way roundness you can change the shape of it and feather is just like in Lightroom and you can uh, one of the things that you don't have in Lightroom is the inner brightness because sometimes you want to add vignette to f to enhance the center of the image but uh, you can also add brightness in the center if you want to and one other feature is that you can change the center of it so just click play center and whenever you click let me increase the amount so you can see it better whatever you click that that is considered to be the center of the image so it's not exactly it does not exactly have to be the center of your image that's really cool and then you also have pre-crop which uh, basically does the um, this white uh, image I don't know the difference between post crop and pre crop but uh, anyways you can make dark or white uh, so I don't know what this pre crop means so bear with me um, what else let's talk about the, the layers as I said you have several layers so you can for example if I'm happy what, with what I've done here I can create a new layer so just go here and choose add new adjustment layer uh, new image layer I don't know what that is I guess it overlays an image here and uh, HDR bracket layer I, I don't know uh, what this does the original image what it does it just uh, overlays the original image on top of, of your edit here so underneath I have that original so if I want to have parts of the original image there I can have it and uh, let's delete this delete I can also blend it of course I can blend it using overlay or whatever well some of the blend modes that you see here uh, let's delete this and create a new adjustment layer so creating a new adjustment layer what it does is 
it resets all the settings here and you can see if I select the original image you can see I have different settings let's go to HDR basic basic so you can see it and when I choose layer one everything goes back to the default you can rename this double clicking I can change this for example to contrast so maybe here I only want to change the contrast and the color on another layer so I can do that so for the contrast I could probably I don't know increase the, the contrast itself and highlights a bit brighter or whatever and the shadows a bit brighter as well so what I could do now is if I only want to have this effect on part of the image I can do that using uh, a radial mask a gradient mask or a brush radial mask as you guessed is just creating a radial image uh, well a radial, a radial gradient and you can see here I have this small mask uh, that's created when you create this radial gradient and if I click on it I can choose invert so if I want to have the effect only on the on the inside or on the outside okay uh, of course I can also clear it so basically fill it with black so that no effect is visible you can also paint uh, if you use the brush so I can paint in the effect if the brush is the layer mask is black I can paint with white to reveal that effect that I have on this layer which in this case is um, is the highlights and all of this so I can just add that effect in where I paint See that? which is good if I don't like that uh, I can choose clear again um, here on the top you will see a few settings and here on the mask I can choose to show mask on the image so I can see where I paint and also you can change the uh, the density of it um, the density for people that don't know it is just like in Lightroom if you have a, a black mask um, means everything is invisible on the image so in this case the effect is only visible on this area where I painted if I uh, lower the density what it does is that all all of the rest of the mask which is black will become semi-transparent and part of the effect will be visible on the image in this case if I set it to 60% 40% of the effect will be visible through this area here okay the feather what it does is smoothens it's just like applying a Gaussian blur on the mask so uh, because if you don't if you cannot precisely paint on some areas you can smoothen the effect like that okay hide mask and let me show you the uh, if I you can also hide the mask from here to show mask and you can see it you can also disable it uh, let me hide the mask so you can see without the layer mask and with the layer mask. So these are the basics of this uh, HDR software editing. It's a really cool software, really easy to use, uh, highly intuitive when using it. One other thing that I did not mention is that when on the layer that contains the original image, you can make corrections to it. So when I select the layer one, you can see the icon changes to this adjustment layer. And when I choose the original image, you can see I have two new icons which allow me to uh, change the uh, perspective of the image and make corrections on it. I'm going to reset that. You can also change the lens uh, corrections, uh, so the distortion of the lens. You can uh, choose the, the fringe and chromatic aberrations, remove vignetting and all that stuff. So uh, that's really cool to make basic corrections on your images. So I hope you enjoyed this um, quick video. If you have um, requests on making HDR images with this software, I can, I can do it. Probably I'll make one combined with Photoshop if I want to make some manipulations or something like that. So now that we're done with this, I'm going to show the, uh, uh, I'm going to reset this and I'm going to show you the original, what the image was. Uh, this was the uh, zero exposure, so the normal exposure, and this is the effect that we got using this software. Probably a bit unrealistic for the sky, but um, this is uh, what I've done really quick. Here you have the, histor the history, and you can go back all the way to where you started using the, uh, well, where you started to edit the image, and if you want to make a quick before and after, you can click here as well. You can also crop your, crop your images and well make all this uh, reset uh, all these settings. You can change expert ratios and you can even have a preset for Facebook cover, which uh, allows you to crop the image exactly uh, on your Facebook cover or your Facebook feed, which I guess is the uh, 
timeline image size but anyways that's how you can edit images in aurora hdr 